You want industrial wargaming pipeline for your gaming table, but no one seems to make any in the theme that you want? Today we're building 40k terrain and we're making this modular wargaming pipeline. That's coming up. Welcome back to Ordnance Wargaming. If this is your first time here and you want to improve your wargaming, make your tabletop battles more epic, and give your wargaming budget more power, then be sure to smash the subscribe button and ding the bell. That way, you'll never miss anything. Now let's see what you need to make this terrain. Okay, so this pile of mess is all the things you're gonna need to make this piece of terrain. You're going to need some PVC pipe, about 15 millimeters, to make the pipe out of. You're gonna want a variety of joiners which are going to connect the pipes together and make this modular terrain. You're going to need some 3 mil MDF or plastic card to form the base of your terrain. You're gonna want some foam board to make the towers for the connectors of your terrain out of. If your connectors have risen up text like that on, you're gonna to want to take that off. So you're going to need some sandpaper, a fine and a coarse will do fine. If you have a rotary tool, this will make this process a lot quicker. You're gonna want your variety of brushes, the usual suspects. You're gonna need some base coat as well as the colors you wanna use. You need some sand or flock to texture your base with. You're also going to wanna use some transfers to put some nice transfers onto your terrain. You're also going to need some warm water to activate the transfers. And of course, you need some glue and some gap filler to join stuff together and stick your sand down. And finally, you're gonna need to seal it off with your water and PVA in your spray bottle. Okay. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is take your PVC pipe and we're going to cut it to length. So you just grab your saw and your pipe and you just pick a length about the length that you want and you just start hacking away at it. And you want to end up with a whole bunch of shorter sections that are more manageable. You can have some variance between them, that's fine. And if the end's not perfectly neat, that's also fine because they're going to slip into these joiners like so, and you're never gonna see that messy edge. Okay, so once you've got your pipes cut to some nice lengths, you're going to wanna take any of your pieces of PVC connector that have the risen up text on them, and just grab your sandpaper and you just start sanding it away until it's gone. Or since that takes too long, you can just grab your rotary tool and use that. And you end up with something like that. And we're going to fill in where it's a bit scuffed up with some acrylic filler, just to make it come up nice and smooth. Bam! Once you've got all of that text taken off, you're gonna grab your gap filler, squeeze a little bit out of the end of it, and you just smear it over like so, just to smooth out that surface as much as possible where it got smashed up with the sandpaper on the rotary tool. And if it doesn't come out as smooth as you want it, once you've got the gap filler on, you can always grab some fine sandpaper and smooth it back once the gap filler has dried. Okay, so while the gap filler on your joiners is setting, you're gonna take your foam board and you're gonna get some blocks cut out of it about this big, just so that our joiners have something to raise them up off the ground with. And what we're gonna do with those is we're going to try to make them as square as possible to start with. Given that they're already 30 mil across this way, because that's the thickness of my board, we're going to cut the rough ends off of either side just to neaten that up a bit. So as usual, you just take our knife and just cut them down a bit. Like so, and you repeat that with all of your squares, making sure you have enough squares for each of your joiners. With the exception of the 90 degrees bends, because those bends, I might use one of them, so, so two of the bends are going to end up being on for the pipe coming up out of the ground, and the other 90 degree bend will be laid on its side like this on a block so that we can have the pipe bend at 90 degrees. But what we're going to do is we are going to carve a small channel into our block of foam so that these joiners have something to sit down into. So you just take your knife and you carve it about there and about there-ish and you cut a triangle into it first. Then you test fit the pipe that you want to go in there. So this one still needs to have a fair bit more taken out of it. it needs to come out to the sides some more. And you can just snap it out like so. And it gives you a nice channel 
for your pipe to sit down into. And once you're happy with the height, you can check it with a piece of pipe. You can even get a mini to put behind it to see how well it conceals them and if it's too high or too low. So once you've got your piece of foam cut roughly the way you want it, you're gonna get your acrylic gap filler. And with your acrylic gap filler, you just layer plenty of it on there and you take your piece of joiner and you just smoosh it down into it like so to get it to fill out all of the gaps. And then you use your finger to just smooth out the gap filler rubbing the excess off like so. And if you have a bit of a gap still, you can get some of your gap filler and as the name suggests, fill your gaps. And you'll be left with something like that that you'll be able to stick to a piece of MDF and insert your pipes into. So you do that with the rest of them. With the 45 and the 90 degree bend, you're gonna need to be a bit more tricky with the way that you carve it out because obviously it's not straight through, but it's still fairly easy to do. So you just do that with the rest of them and you wait for them to set. Okay guys, so once you've got all of your pieces of PVC joiner attached to the foam riser, what we're gonna do now is we're going to bring in a standard size miniature. I just have a Necron Warrior here. This is the size of miniature I want to be able to hide behind these. So you're gonna take a bit of pipe and just insert it into one of them and probably wanna get another one just so that it's held up at both ends. And you set it up like that and then you're going to put your miniature to one side of it like so to get a rough height. Now as you can see, it's way too high for what I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my knife and I'm going to take a whole bunch off of it to cut it down to size. And it is best to leave your acrylic gap filler to set overnight before doing this Otherwise, it will come loose when you try to do it and you will get horrible like that happening, which you will have to then clean up. You repeat that process on all of them, getting them all to about the same height, and then we're going to stick them down to a piece of MDF that is beveled off as usual and base coat them. Okay guys, so the last step before we can attach our pieces of PVC joiner to our MDF base is we need to take our two remaining 90 degree bends where the pipe is going to come up out of the ground and we need to cut them so that they are level with the other ones. As you can see, it is not even slightly level. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're going to take the first one that we made that we've taken all of our other measurements off of and you line it up like so. You bring in your knife and you just make a mark across like so and it puts a little mark onto the PVC where we're going to cut through with our saw like we did with our PVC pipe. Once you cut it through on one, you'll measure it up and do the same on the other one. Bam! Now they're all stuck down to their bases and I've base coated them. I also sprayed the pipes black so they're ready to receive some color. So you can color them up however you like. However, I do recommend using a solid color for most of it and then just highlighting the edges with something to make it stand out. That's what I've found works best for this so far. So I'm gonna start with the Space Wolves Gray and I'm just gonna take some on my brush and just pick one of these and start layering it on. Once you layer your Space Wolves Grey onto all of them or whatever your base colour is, and then I'm just going to highlight the edges around the opening of these tubes with some Gehenna's Gold, and I will probably paint the blocks that they're sitting on in Space Wolves as well and highlight the edges of those in Gehenna's Gold. Then we'll be ready to texture the bases. Bam! Now they're all painted up and how good are they looking? I've also added the transfers to them and I've done the same with the pipes that'll go between them. I've only done this many because time is against me at the moment, but the process for the others is the same. You just chuck on the base color, then you highlight the edges, then you slap your transfers on using your warm water and the directions on the back of the transfer sheet. So now the last step that we have to do is to just apply our sand, which is going to be the texture or the base of the pipe. And to do that, as usual, we just put on a bit of glue like so, and we have it run absolutely everywhere. Then we spread it out with the brush for applying glue so we don't destroy our good brushes. You need to be very careful that you don't get any glue inside the pipe because otherwise the sand will stick there and getting the other pipes to slide in will not work 
properly. But once you've applied the glue to the base, you grab your sand as usual and just sprinkle it over it, making sure to cover the entire section of the base. And then you shake off the excess, like so. And then we let the glue set and spray it down with our water and PVA. And it's all done and you can slot it all together. Bam, and it's all finished. And how fantastic is that looking for just a couple of dollars of PVC pipe from the hardware store and an hour or two of your time. And I think it's come out really, really nicely and it has a nice industrial yet Necron feel to it. And of course, you can theme it to any army that you want to theme it to. You're not just stuck to the one Imperial theme for your terrain, which is absolutely fantastic. So there you go. That's how you can make some really nice and cheap wargaming industrial pipeline for your gaming tables. And I think it came out looking really nice, especially given how easy it was to assemble. And because it's not really stuck together and it's just slipped together, it means that if you want your pipes to change between battles and have it so that they lay out in a slightly different way, you can do that very, very easily. Also, because it does come apart the way it does, it means that you can put it in a box very easily, which of course is a really good thing if you don't have a huge amount of space for storing your terrain in. So thanks for watching. If you have an idea for some terrain that you'd love to see us make, then chuck it in the comment section below so that we can see if we can make that happen for you. And as always guys, if you want to improve your wargaming, make your tabletop battles more epic, and give your wargaming budget more power, be sure to smash the crosshair and ding the bell. You'll subscribe and I'll be able to share with you more battle reports, terrain tutorials, and strategies that will make your wargaming experience more epic. And I'll see you next time.